Okay, folks, today's sponsor of WTF is Audible. Please visit audiblepodcast.com slash WTF pod for a free audiobook download. Do it. Lock the gate! Are we doing this? Really? Wait for it. Are we doing this? Wait for it. What the fuck? Pow! Are we, are we, are we doing this? And it's also, eh, what the fuck? Are we doing this? Really? What's wrong with me? It's time for WTF. What the fuck? With Mark Marin. Okay, let's do this. How's everybody doing? How are you, what the fuckers? Or might I say, if I could, because I actually got an email referring to my greeting, somebody suggested what the fucking ears. Kind of like it? Let me know what you think. I know you've gotten used to what the fuckers, but how about what's going on, what the fucking ears? I like that because then we could make hats for, you know, the, you know, like, like fucking ear hats. I guess I'm going on a mouseketeer riff. I don't know what the hats would be, but what the fucking ears is kind of nice and it doesn't have any sort of derogatory uh, messaging to it. Like what the fuckers. Fucker is not generally, well, you can use it as like, hey, fucker, what's up? I'm just putting that out there and I'm sure some of you have noticed, hey, what show am I listening to? What the hell is that? Where's the other music? That is our new music. And I'm very happy with it. And I would like to thank John Montagna of Brooklyn for submitting it, along with all your other submissions, which we will be using some of them throughout the other shows. But John's uh, got through to me. I just liked it. It was raw. I like the acoustic sound. I like the rhythm. Felt good. Hope it felt good to you. Uh, John Montagna, thank you very much. Uh, It's good to be here. It's good to be out in the garage. It's good to be talking to you people. Things have been going on, I guess. The ongoing problem with the Avatar movie. I've been getting a lot of flack, like, you know, you know, that's contempt prior to investigation. Go see it. Don't judge it just on the money. Then someone sent me several emails about, would you use this model uh, in judging other things? And he, he presented this big logical thing. I don't have time to read right now, but it, basically he was being a, he was acting as, whether he wants to or not, as a an Avatar stooge in the sense that he was coercing me into seeing the movie. And I may go do that. Okay, I may go see the movie only because I don't want to be guilty of of uh, contempt prior to investigation, even though the reason I'm not going is on uh, principle around the money spent. And it, it, it's a cultural indicator. I'll talk about it later. Maybe I'll talk about it Thursday. I don't want to go into it now. Thank you for all the feedback on that. Thank you for all the feedback about the porn episode. A lot of people were very moved by it. A lot of people resonated with some of the issues I was talking about around porn with uh, my buddy, almost Dr. Steve, who I will also come, uh, you know, have back on the show to sort of respond to some of those emails. So look forward to that because he is a real guy. He's not a fake guy. He's a real therapist, and people were interested. I always seem to be dealing with some issues that people wanted to talk about, so we will have him back. To answer one question to one uh, listener who asked me what uh, Dana D'Armond was wearing, she was dressed normally. She did not come in spiked heels uh, wearing Victoria's Secret or something higher end. She came dressed as a girl coming to sit down and talk. Yeah, T-shirt, jeans, that kind of thing. I know I talked to some of you, uh, to all of you, any of you who are listening, about the size of my tweeter dick, uh, my tweener, as somebody said on on Twitter, and I, I'm start, I'm okay with it. I'm starting to realize that a lot of the people that listen to this show may be grown ups, may not Twitter, may not have time for it, may not uh, want to deal with that. I understand. Thank you for those of you who who got on board at Mark Marin, one word at Twitter, or WTF Pod uh, at Twitter. Uh, because I do use it. I do put stuff out there. So if you want to get on board with that, you're welcome. But I felt a little small about it. Now I felt small about feeling small about being on Twitter. I, I am consumed with, with bullshit today in the sense that I, Comedy Central now has me on their site, on their big comedy showdown thing. Now I got to be honest with you. The, the whole comedy showdown thing is basically something I think they do every year. They put a bunch of half hour specials up there and they basically see, you know, who, who votes for who. And it's a, it's a popularity contest, but it's also a big social networking event. 
Now, I sort of you know got myself on there because I was kind of pissed off that I wasn't on there. Now, here's what embarrassed me about the whole thing. I'm a 46-year-old man. I'll be honest about that, but it seems to me that inside I am a fucking child, a teenager, that I have moments where I think, hey, I'm accepting my age, I'm accepting the fact that, that certain things aren't going to happen, that I don't need to compete on certain levels, that I can let some things go and enjoy my life. On another level... Y- you know, the whatever year it is in a row they didn't include me in this contest i was furious it's like what do i got to do i've done two half hour specials with them i know it's just a stupid popularity contest i know it's just about generating more hits for them i don't get anything out of it there's no prize other than they run my comedy central presents again but i was just pissed off that i wasn't included at the party so i wrote comedy central an email and i said why am i not included at the party who randomly chose these out of the hundreds of comedy central presents that you've done and but I just I, I was embarrassed about it because what is that part of me that still you know feels left out that still requires to you know I need to be included why am I the outside guy who the fuck is deciding this what what why why am I not included why can't I be part of the group when does that shit go away I felt bad because I don't even it's not even that I care that much I mean what difference does it make most of you people out there don't even get involved with this. And the, 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 the younger people that I have listening to me are a very special type of younger person. You're the kind of person that I was when I was a teenager. You know, alienated, angry, uh, a little smarter than the rest of them in terms of like you realize a lot of stuff is bullshit and you find some solace in knowing that, hey, this old guy still seems to think like me. I don't know what that means for me, but I'm glad you're listening. But that aside, if you go to comedians.jokes.com slash standup dash showdown, you can vote for me. I'm not going to win. I, I don't have uh, the, the reach out that some people do. I don't even want to win. I just wanted to be included. And quite honestly, I've got enough votes there to know that I've been included. But you could do that if you want. Another thing I want to uh, to start plugging, if I could, I need to plug it now. I'm doing a pilot for Comedy Central called WTF. It is not essentially this show. It is a, it is a different type of show. I have a co-host who you will hear from on this show shortly named Chelsea Peretti, a very funny woman. Uh, it has the several different segments. It's a different show than what I'm doing here, but it does have the same title. But we are taping a live pilot presentation Thursday, January 28th at 7 o'clock p.m., at the Comedy Central stage, and that's at the Hudson Theater here in Los Angeles at 6539 Santa Monica Boulevard. Uh, you get, the only way I know that you can get reservations is if you call. So if you're available and in LA to come to this pilot, I'd love to have you. Thursday, January 28th at 7 p.m., you call 323-960-5519 for reservations for WTF the Comedy Central pilot presentation with Mark Marin and Chelsea Peretti. That's 323-960-5519. That's January 28th. It's a Thursday at 7 o'clock. If you can do that, do it. Come on down. Now we're going to sit down with my buddy Billy Burr. Bill Burr. I'm sorry. I knew him when he was Billy. I'm going to have to talk to him about that. Uh, Bill, Bill Burr is hilarious. And he's one of these guys that has only gotten funnier. And... I love watching him. He's one of the few comics that I watch and go, shit, I wish I had thought of that. So I'm really looking forward to talking to Billy. And I, Bill, well, I, we'll have to deal with that. But I hope you enjoy it as well. You guys, go to audiblepodcast.com slash WTF pod. They sponsor this episode of What the Fuck, but also you can get stuff there that are from the guests that we've had on this show. Jerry Stahl's got a little bit of stuff there. Eugene Merman is there. David Cross, his book is uh, available in an audio book with him narrating. As I said, Sam Lipsight, I think I'm going to go get David Foster Wallace. I just started reading David Foster Wallace, believe it or not, because somebody recommended his essays specifically about the porn. He uh, did a, 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 an essay on the AVN Awards, which uh, my guest, Dana D'Armond, is r- nominated for the big one. And I just started reading David Foster Wallace. I don't know why I had an aversion to him. Uh, it wasn't even a, an aversion based on anything other than the girth and weight of Infinite Jest. It was one of those books that, not unlike Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow, just just you know was this monolithic testament 
of modern literature and it was like daunting and I just never even tried it and it, it, it alienated me to the point where I just didn't read his shit but he's quite brilliant and also quite dead sadly but he's available at audible.com I'm just saying that if you're into listening to podcasts that there's plenty of options if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash WTF pod you'll get a free audiobook download of your choice it's worthwhile. If you like this format, you're going to dig that. So do that. Talking about taking up uh, guitar. What, what, well, the skateboarding thing is, if you don't, there's certain things if you don't do... Have you when already begun this, by the way? We're kind of easing into it. That's actually a really interesting way to start a podcast, like mid-conversation, let people catch up. Well, right, because then you you know you you see you're you're undermining the uh, the process, Bill. Yeah, I, because what happens is like you forget that you're doing it, and then you know all of a sudden we're in the middle of a conversation. Oh, I see. That? I was gonna say you should just have the record button on, and just every, as you're walking in, you just see there's people getting close. Like, hey, yeah, yeah, here they, he's coming bitch. in. I don't know what the fucking deal is. So, anyways. <laughs> Come health, on, come on health in. Healthcare. Yeah. What's up with that? I, uh, well, you know, I actually had a, a mic planted in your car yesterday. Yeah. So we, you know, <laughs> this is going to be a great episode. My guest, uh, in the garage here at the Cat Ranch in the barrio is, uh, Bill Burr, formerly Billy Burr. Formerly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've always, you know, some, I was always Bill right up until I got into showbiz and, uh, you know, people. Some people got in my head like, "Ah, oh, it doesn't flow together." You should go by William or whatever. So I kind of listened to him, and and for like probably like four years, I went by Billy. And every time somebody said it, like I cringed. Like I don't know how Billy Crystal does it. Like as a man, you Billy. know, Billy. Yeah. If you didn't grow up with it, but someone talked you into that. But I was Billy when I was a little kid. If you're right. a little kid, a little kid is Billy. And anytime a comedian does a joke and there's a little kid that they're talking to it's like oh, let me tell you something billy yeah it's always uh, billy. yeah well that's interesting because that goes back to what mm. we were just talking about maybe when you were billy you would have taken up guitar or skateboarding oh, without being self-conscious yeah well that's because that's what we're talking well, about I, I wasn't self-conscious until i got an argument with my fucking neighbor down below me I, oh, all right this happened today no this happened like like two three days ago about guitar playing no it it, it turned into that it what? got it got ugly what, uh, what happened all right so i live in this old building and yeah. like it's re like there's no insulation in it whatsoever. Like I've been sitting on my couch late at night, and you know, feeling like I'm the only person in the world. And all of a sudden, you just hear like, um. <laughs> you see somebody clear their throat, and they sound like they're on the couch with you. Like the place is fucking haunted, and they're literally across the courtyard. I don't know what if it's the acoustics. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So everything's fucking loud as hell in there. So we live above this this old guy, the classic old guy you don't want to be living yeah. alone, not even no you know no pets. Yeah blinds pulled you don't even know what the fuck he does right and uh he's always like he's really sarcastic yeah it's like if you drop something you know because there's gravity you drop something he, he you just hear him like muffled downstairs you just hear do it again oh no like that he's, no. he's doing that how could he live in a place that's got that thin a situation going? It, it's it's fucking ridiculous and like uh oh keep it up oh shit he does that so i think it's funny if he says do it again i do it again you know comedian i don't give a shit but my girlfriend like maybe because it's a guy she feels bullied by him so like two months ago she tells me you know you really need to go down there and talk to this guy you need to talk to this guy man up no no dude man up would be if it was me with, with the same age yeah right right how old is this guy Dude, I, I don't know. You know, hundreds. I, I was joking on my podcast that he tested from a Kale's Navy. <laughs> That's how old he is. He's an old guy, so it's like, what am I gonna do? Yeah, what, I'm gonna go down there, and wh what is gonna come of this? I don't want to do this shit. So yesterday, yeah, it's two, three days ago, it's the end of Christmas. I'm dragging my Christmas tree down. It's like ten in the fucking morning. Legally, I'd start building a house at seven a.m. Yeah, yeah, I'm bringing a tree down, and he comes out, and then sarcastic is is hell. To the point, I didn't even get it, but he just had this bizarre look on his face. He just goes, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, beautiful morning, isn't it? Like, oh, yelled Christ. at, and I, was, yeah. and I was looking at him like, like uh, what, what the fuck is yeah, this yeah, guy yeah, out yeah, of his yeah, mind? Yeah. And then I realized, oh, he's being sarcastic. Oh, right. I heard the tree coming down. So I'm like, whatever. And I go in the house, and my girl's like, oh, he was yelling again. Go down there and talk to him. So I'm like, fine. You want me to talk to him? So I go down there, and I go down to talk to the guy. And as I start walking up his walk, he's sitting there, and I, I see like this little kind of look of fear on his face. And I didn't go down there to have an argument. And I just, I was just like, listen, man, I, you're always yelling up there. What is the problem? And I sound like she dropped a brick. And he just starts screaming at me. I go, look, we have hardwood floors. Look, I came, I kept going. I came down here to work it out. 
And he goes, what does that mean? What is that, some sort of hip new saying? I swear to God. <laughs> so I keep, I kept my cool, and I kept going like, dude, I'm just coming down here to blah, 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 right? And he just kept yelling at me. Then at one point, he made a reference to my bad guitar playing. As sarcastic as hell, he goes, how's your band? And then, oh. he, and then he goes, <laughs> then he goes, <laughs> then he goes, <laughs> oh, this little no. laugh, right? No. And, uh, no, I mean, I swear to God, yeah. if, if there is an afterlife, I want kudos on this because I immediately want to be like, how's your fucking life? Yeah, yeah. How's your fucking life, <laughs> you really? Is this it. what you dream of? You didn't huh? do it? Yeah, who's your last roommate? You fucking Larry Howard? <laughs> 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 you fucking asshole. No, because I, I have a line. I don't yell at old people. I don't. So, all right, well, so that's uh, what he said. He goes, how's your guitar? And that's what fucking kills me is it really hurt my feelings because that was outside the realm of comedy. So I don't have musician walls built up. Yeah, he you hurt your feelings. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. he got in. Yeah, he, he got in. Oh, he got he in. He got in. He fucking gave me an uppercut right to my feelings. Oh, And he always shit. even worked because then I came upstairs and my girlfriend was standing on the balcony listening to all. She wants to go at it with the guy. And I just, uh, I just, you know, I got lines. But what happened though? So what happened was I find the worst thing I just said to him. I didn't even say you're a jerk. I just said, you know what? You're being a jerk right now. I came down here and, and you're just being a jerk. And I walked away and uh, and I just I left it at that. And, you know, of course, everybody listened to my podcast. was like, dude, you know what I would have done? Yeah. I would have fucking got a paint gun. No, you wouldn't have. Yeah. You wouldn't have. You no. wouldn't have. Or people tell me to stomp around my apartment. Oh, that's a great. And play the TV real loud. Oh, great. So I actually piss off all the sane people in my building. Well, you know, it's weird is that with those kind of situations, yeah, he, the, the fact is you could be as nice as fucking hell to the guy and he still won't change. And it's only going to be for you. You, you know, it, 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 but sometimes if you're nice and you make gestures, sometimes they do have a level of an understanding. He's probably yeah, angry. I, 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 I think what I should have done was I should have made a gesture a while ago and I didn't. And now the first time we've acted, just the first time we've ever really It's a talked, confrontation. It's a confrontation. So I, I, I think it's it's over. You know, it's like it's that, that, that horrific. You, like if you get into an argument with a girl to that level on a first date, there's no second date. No. There's no, you can't bring the flowers. Not unless there. they're sick. So with yeah. me, there's yeah. usually a third and a fourth <laughs> date and eventually a marriage. So, so I don't know how that works for you, but it uh, might. Experience. If you get into a really good argument on the first date, you might marry her. Oh. I didn't have that experience, but back when I lived in, in Astoria... Oh, because you consider like this great intellectual back and forth? Well, whatever it is, it's drama. And, and sometimes that feels like feelings. You know? Yeah, drama. And then they're crazy, so the sex is great. And you're like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've, just, you've built an entire relationship that's, that's completely Ugh. draining and is completely emotionally disconnected. Yeah, you just described my 30s and my late 20s. <laughs> I'm glad you got out of it. I'm still trying. But get, getting back on that, my experience with that was when I lived in Astoria, I had neighbors. The, I, all I knew was the guy was a, an EMT. He had a family over there. You uh -huh. know, he's a real dude, you know, Latino guy. Uh -huh. I only saw him once or twice, never met him. Here's how I met that guy. I used to get in fights with my ex-wife, you know, before we were married. And she was uh -huh. over there, and we were fighting, and it was bad, <laughs> Ignor right? Ignoring all red flags, just plowing ahead. Oh, yeah, this is before I married, right. <laughs> so all of a sudden, dude, all of a sudden I hear a knock on the door, like, like urgent. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I open the door, I'm standing at the door, my wife in the hallway a little further down, it's my neighbor, looks right past me, looks at her and goes, everything okay here? Oh, no. Yeah. He handled you like a wife beater. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> have, you, have you ever had that happen? Because that was like one of my bigger fears that, you know, when you get into a sort of predicament and their honor is at stake, that you're not going to do the right thing. I've had that a couple of times, but I've been able to talk myself out of it. Like, I'm, I'm not like a, uh, I'm one of those guys, like, I, I feel like I could have been a great fighter. Yeah. Like, and not like, like UFC, but like, as far as hold your own, I could have been. Right. I just never went down that road. I just, you know, I had four brothers. We used to kick the shit out of each other every right. day. And the shit my older brother did to me, I kind of got psyched out when I went into public because I was like, you know, my brother has to answer to my dad yeah. like, when he comes home. This fucking guy <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> I used to have a line in my act. I used to say, you know, when it really comes down to it, uh, you know, 90% of people won't throw a punch. That's the funniest thing. That's, oh, yeah, there's all this fucking, you know, yeah, yeah, posturing yeah, yeah. and Oh, yeah, charging. a lot of dancing. Yeah, yeah. but that other 10% will bite your ear off. Yeah. And that's what you're worried about. Where <laughs> and, and it really gets to the point where it's just like, like your brawling days are during those days when you can't get sued, which I don't think exists anymore. Because at this point in third grade, you can fuck up somebody else in the third grade. And you can go to adult prison. And, and then, no, like, no, the p parents end up getting sued. Right. Somehow they get sued. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go with dogs, kids, everything. I mean, like, when I say I didn't have fights, I mean, I stopped around junior high because other kids started growing. 
and then all of a sudden I wasn't growing because I was one of the bigger kids. Yeah. Like I was supposed to be born June 10th, 1968, and I was. And I was a 10 pound baby dude, and there was not one cute picture of me. I was a huge, <laughs> yeah. I was like a fucking so, sandbag. A little red haired yeah. mass of flesh. If you had 100,000 of yeah. me, you could have stopped that flood in New Orleans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just stacked up little yeah, yeah. Billy Burrs. And, and jumpers. Yeah, my big Charlie Brown head, dude. And I had Thank like, God to the army of Billy Burrs. Yeah. New and Orleans I, has been saved. <laughs> and I had that big baby fat right up until like fucking like sixth grade. And then people started shooting up and then I, I, I wasn't. And then it was like the kids I used to pick on and shit all of a sudden were bigger than me. And then I had to go with humor. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. yeah. You know. So you didn't have to pay the price for oh, yeah. whatever you did in junior high or whatever the hell yeah. you did. It. So what? So you got into a couple scraps, scrapes? When I was growing up, I did. Yeah, like the classic suburban white kid, uh, street hockey games, fought this fucking kid <laughs> at another buddy of mine's birthday parties. And he was, dude, he was literally like a fucking foot taller than me. He was one of the yeah. biggest kids in the grade, and he played hockey. So he was like psycho competitive. This is my version, of course. Yeah. I'm sure he was like, ah, I barely, I barely looked at him, and he yeah. flipped out. And, yeah. And, you know, just yeah. the usual. The uh, scrambling. I yeah. had a moment that I'll never forget. Like, I was driving. I don't remember. I must have been in college or something, or maybe in high school even. And I was driving down the street with another buddy in high school, and we saw some kids, like young kids, like, you know, third or fourth graders about to throw down. Something was oh, going on. Oh, that's great. You know, Did there you was put one, money on it? There was one, like, you know, really wiry kid that looked like the problem. Then there was a chubby kid. And, and we pulled up to see what was going on. No, because we wanted, I, you know, I, my first thought was we should, you know, we're adults. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would, I would pick the wiry kid. Well, here's what the fight, the horrible thing was about it is that, like, uh, because I identify with the fat kid. I was a fat kid and I was always funny and very diplomatic. <laughs> so, uh, so we stopped and my buddy who I was with is, was an asshole. He wanted right. the fight to happen. So we're there. I'm, it's not even good cop, bad cop. My buddy's going, you know, like, are you going to kick his ass? And the little wire How kids old like, are you? We're in like high school, probably seniors in high school. And these kids must have been fourth grade, third grade. Wow. So, okay. so, so like, uh, and I'm like, dude, I, we shouldn't, don't fight. You know, it's not a good idea. Don't fight. And the fat kid, like, you know, he's nervous. I can tell he's nervous. And the little guy wants to hit him. <laughs> and the fat kid looks at him. He's like, he's like, hey, you know what? I'll make you a deal. You know, Johnny. You know, Johnny, he he's gonna kick my ass tomorrow. So why don't you guys both do it tomorrow? You know, instead of do it. To, so he, oh my god, so he, he was negotiating, and I'm like, he just bought himself another day, and I thought it was kind of genius <laughs> because that's sort of something I would say. It's like, all right, I got another day to get out of this. <laughs> I'll be all numbed up from the first ass kick, yeah. and I won't even feel the second well, he'll one. He'll probably weasel his way out of the other fights. I mean, in my, I wish I had gotten into uh, at least you know a few fights. I've always been like a, a verbally. You know, I'll I'll spar like that, dude. It isn't it isn't fuck. I mean, I I got my ass kicked at. Uh, at I'm not asking at, anyone at, to at kick this. my ass, by the way. Do not yeah, come no, to no, one of my no. shows. You, you don't want to. Uh, that's why I stopped. Fu- like I fought and I would fight anybody right up to about sixth to seventh grade, and then I saw this one fight where it was. Uh, I'm not. I, I never name names, okay? But these two kids are going to get off the bus. One kid is like that kid who's already lifting yeah. in seventh and eighth grade, right. and he yeah, has yeah, a body yeah. of a man. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, when you're senior, somehow he's still five foot one. He's that guy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in, in junior high, he's the Hulk. This kid was fucking huge. Yeah. And the other kid was sort of big, baby, fat, baby Huey looking dude, but he was a fucking psycho. So the, you know, junior high Hulk is getting off first. And right as they get off the bus, the, the psycho pushed him from behind, jumped on him, got on his chest, and just fucking haymakers to the face, right? Oh, Rock him, sock him. Like. It was like everybody went like uh, went, it was like um, unbelievable, like excitement and then just horror. It was like oh, oh, and you just fucking looked away, dude. And that kid didn't show up to school for a week. And when he came back, like the, his face was still swollen. And he didn't even look like himself. And I'm, I I remember just thinking like, you know what, dude? I'm not a fighter, man. I don't have that in me to take that. Or do the that? Do, yeah. Like there's like a fucking the same like a mentality to become oh, yeah. a comedian. Yeah. And you have to. You got to make peace with yourself as a man that, dude, you're not the action hero guy. You're just fucking not. And, you know, w- what's going to happen? But, you- like, have you been in situations, though, where, like, you know, when we started this conversation about where you're with your wife or, I mean, your girlfriend and something happens and you got to step up? And prior used to do a great joke about that, about the whole sort oh. of, like, run. You, you know, if, if like, yeah. you know, come on, you, you, get, you start running behind me. I don't remember what the joke was. Well, the, the, but I remember it was ballsy of him to do it because I watched that special every once in a while, the right. first one. And just the idea that he undercuts that whole idea of like you're gonna have to you know step up and defend your girl's honor. He's yeah, like, yeah. You stupid. ready to run? It's a stupid thing to do. Yeah, but how are you gonna walk away from that? Because it, you know, this is the thing. I understand why women want you to do that. Yeah. 
but they, they got to understand why you shouldn't. And there's a classic fucking story. I remember one time they uh, they picked this guy up who fucking killed two old people in Massachusetts. They picked yeah. him up Midtown Manhattan. You know what he was doing? He was handing out those uh, those those flyers to take the double decker bus tour. Right. Yeah. Sure. Around Manhattan. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Okay, now that's the kind of guy you get into an argument with. Right. Dude, I don't want to take the fucking bus door. And then you're going to throw down with this. This guy is wanted for two murders. You don't fucking know that. That's right. You that's don't right. know it. Yeah. So there's, there's all of that shit. Like, I totally made peace with that. I'm just like, dude, I'm not a brawler. What, what I would get raped in prison. Oh, yeah. I'd get my exactly. fucking ass kicked by any... I, I would really like... Uh, yeah. Unless... It was a brother brother kind of fight. Like yeah. if they fought the way my brothers fought, I, I could do the dual headlock thing. Right. You know that that. Well, usually dance. those fights ended when someone cried, right? Uh yeah. No, they they it it it. It was all based know. on who cries. Like when, when my yeah. brother, once they were crying, it was done. You, I had you, one one time. I had a fight with my brother, and it was when we were getting we were getting too big to fight, and my dad came in to break it up. And uh, as he broke it up, like a fucking NHL ref, and yeah. I was like a goon, yeah. I gave him one over the shoulder, caught him right in the face. Your brother? Uh, and it was like like some movie, <laughs> some movie studio should have recorded the sound, because it was the classic punch in the face, Pow! just that pop, that, that fucking pop? Yeah. flesh sound. And I, was, I remember thinking, like, wow, it really does sound like that, because we usually didn't really hit in the face, and yeah. I fucking got him with a good one. And I swear to God, dude, 12 years, 12 years after that, we would be out drinking. Yeah, and there would be a moment in, in his drunkenness where I would I would feel him sizing me up, <laughs> and I'd be sitting there going like, "There's no fucking way he's still mad at this. There's no way." So one night I'm drinking with another one of my brothers, and he starts bringing up, you know, how I used to fight. My older brother got mad because I finally beat him at some point. Yeah, he's like, yeah. "Dude, you fought like you didn't even fucking know me." I was like, "Dude, fuck you used to fucking throw me down the stairs. What are you talking about? There's no rug there either, you know." So then, I, and then some I brought my my younger brother, and it's like, you know. And I just kind of threw it out there to test. They go, he thinks I don't know, but I know. I know he's testing me. And I just waited. My brother's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He talks about every time he gets drunk. <laughs> no, he does yeah, not. He did. Yeah, he did. So you still got an answer for that. No, no, no. It's over now. You it's, sure? It's, it's over. I, I, I think, uh, dude, I'm 42. But the thing about it is I kept myself in good shape. So if he kicked my ass, he wouldn't feel sorry for me. My right. problem is I didn't let my body go. Right. So I couldn't have that sad middle age. Right, right. Come on, man. But it's so funny that, like, you know, like, I just picture that, that moment where you just catch one. He catches you off guard. And he pops. He goes, that, it, we're even. Like, even if it happened next uh, week. If he did, I, I think, I think I would be, I'd be all right. Depends on how good he got me and, and who was around. Well, I'm just happy, you know, you're in good shape. But there was that period there where you were fucking nuts. Where I was what? You were a little nuts, I think. Uh, you know, you were pretty emaciated, and you were like, "I can do nine hundred pull ups." Do you was remember? I, was I emaciated? You, were, you got pretty thin, man. But I mean, you were you were you were uh, fit. But do you remember that? I mean, what was going well, on? How long was, ago was it? I was in before you left New York. I just remember there was a time where you were like, you know, "Oh yeah, yeah." Not even know. Everybody's telling me, oh, "You look great. You look great." Uh, what I was trying to do was get back down. It was funny. I was trying to get back down to the weight when I had abs. But the thing is, is once you lose your abs, if you just try to get down to that weight, you actually lose like the muscle. Like well, I, was, older, I, was, you, I wasn't doing it right. Well, you get gaunt when you get older. You, uh, you know, you like fucking Fitzsimmons made fun of me about that. You know, because I, you know, I'm I'm leaner than I, I think I've ever been really. And right. I was, you know, and I'm I was going to the gym a lot. He goes, "You look like one of those guys who's like 45 years old, but uh, just runs. You got that gaunt, weird face of someone who exercises too oh, yeah. much." Greg always bringing the positivity. Yeah, that guy fucking. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> yeah, I go in there and I want to do, I just want to talk to him. I feel like we're on the same side. We think the same way. And all of a sudden I'm like, why am I, fu he just pounded me. Yeah. Did he do that to you? Uh, oh, it, it's, it, it's, you, you can't, you don't take it personal. It, I love Greg. I love too. Greg. I, I, you got to know that Greg, uh, Greg begins the conversation by sticking a mitt in your face. Right. But it's like, what it's like we, Larry Holmes. He comes we, in like Larry Holmes, but, big 15 ounce right in your face. But you think that you, you have the same opinion and he's arguing with you. It's the weirdest thing. Like we're, he was arguing with me about, you know, and we agreed. So you went to the dentist and your teeth are all right? Yeah. They're fine. They're I'm fine. worried about my teeth. Well, my, 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 uh, my dad is a dentist. So I kind of know, I know the racket. I know that we got to take full, full fucking x rays. No, you don't. How your gums? gums they're fine. Your gums good? Uh, they're a little, I brush it a little too hard, so they're trying, they, 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 they actually talked me into buying this fucking electronic toothbrush. It was a hundred bucks. Sonicare? Yeah, it sucks. You have a Sonicare? I don't know what it was, but all I know is, is it just stopped. It stopped working after a while if I didn't apply any pressure and then like, well, why don't, why don't you try this one? It's like, do you understand that you sold me a hundred dollar toothbrush and it doesn't work? Why don't, why don't I just go back to the old one? And it's like, if I brush too hard and I brushed away a little bit of my gum, um, I don't brush on the gum. So whatever's, 
was there is gone, and it's not going to go any further back. Go fuck yourselves. Yeah. <coughs> my, I, I'm more, my gums are fucked up. They've always been fucked up because I think I brushed the fuck out of them when I was a kid. And then, and then now, like, because my bite's weird, I, you put too much pressure on one side, and then they recede even more. I, I, w- I would say definitely, definitely get a cleaning. Definitely stay on top of it. Brush and flush your teeth. But I will tell you this. Watch out with them. Uh, trying to sell you on, you know, it's like. What about you, water picks? Are they good? Uh, dude, fuck all. That's all. I have a water pick. I thought yeah. it was. I thought it was supposed to be good. Uh, no, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I don't fucking. Know. I, you, I've never. You. I, I just, dude. If you brush it, you're teeth, the son of a dentist. You have a license you, to be a practitioner. If, well, if you know, yeah, I don't. Would your father say a water pick is good? I don't know. Ugh. Look, all I can tell you is, you brush your teeth and you floss them. You know, then then it comes down to genetics. You should pretty much. Be okay, and I got to tell you, with some of this shit I'm looking on the internet, the stuff that they're able to do now is is fucking incredible. So I don't even need my teeth. I had a buddy of mine. No. <laughs> oh yeah, some, <laughs> just get new teeth. Well, the way it's going with these bankers, you're gonna. Oh maybe, shit! I knew you're it was gonna, gonna, gonna get, come to that. You're gonna be chewing their food for them. No, um, a buddy of mine, uh, 41 years old. I'm riding around. He's got this handicap, uh, you know, thing hanging from the mirror, and he's looking for a handicap park and going to a basketball game. I'm like, what the fuck's he got this for? But no, he got hip replacement surgery at 41. Why? I guess he he because he could her, her, no hereditary, and then uh, he he had a really good time when he was younger, which oh, evidently shit. dries out the 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 cartilage and shit. So that's a really good time. But he need yeah he needed uh, he needed it like seven years ago, and the guy actually told him to wait. He goes just wait the way they're developing stuff. Just wait because the ones we have now are only good for this amount, and you can only get two of them. So you'll basically be in a wheelchair by the time you're in your sixties. By the time he did it now, like. I mean, he was up and walking around like within a month. My dad, my dad's a well, he was a, a practicing surgeon. Yeah. Now he's sort of a GP, but he does that shit. He does hip replacement. I remember one time. I don't know if it's the same with a dentist, right. but my old man. I'm a kid. He's like, you know, you want to come down in the hospital with me? I got to look at a, a a film about how to do this new operation. I'm like, that sounds uh-huh. great. And I had no idea what the fuck he did. Right. And we'd sit in this movie, dude. Uh. They they take a guy, they cut him open oh. at the hip. There's saws, hammers, they, they actually, nails, and I'm like, holy fuck! They actually didn't they 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 actually saw off the top of the finger yeah. back in the day. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, literally, I'm like, what are they gonna do with that stuff? How are they gonna put that fucking guy back together? Because it gave me this whole new, you know, what did they do back in the day? They, they they took like a third of the pelvis off, and then part of the femur, and then they just stuck this plastic. thing Well, in the, there? even if it was a replacement, I think that you got it. You know, my fear was, you know, when you get a new thing in a box and it's got instructions, and if you fuck it up, it's fucked up. Right. You right. know, you got to return it or whatever. You can't get the piece on. You missed a piece. You broke a piece. Right. This guy's. They're cutting off pieces of people's bones throwing them away and that's it you know like oh, yeah, you, that's it you, you, that's you, why you have to watch out these fucking dentists man dentists are just like comedians oh yeah how so to say, in that you know you go down to a comedy club you watch 10 comics two of them are really good another seven are trying to be those two and then there's this one like dude who ever fucking told you that you <laughs> should be in this business <laughs> and i swear to god straight across the board i don't give a uh, salesman dentist anything i work with dentists who were fucking great and then i met I, other dentists who had car payments and teeth got filled. Yeah. Like, you got to understand, you take an oath. You know, when you do, like... Is you, there a teeth oath? There's, <laughs> no, it's like, <laughs> I know it seems ridiculous. To, as, as, oath, as, as, the Hippocratic as, oath? As, as the, uh, as, you know, talking about dentists, but you're taking away a part of somebody's body that doesn't need to be taken away. And if, if you fill a tooth that doesn't need to be filled, now you've cut into the, into the, 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 the natural structure and you've gotten closer to the nerve. Now, if this person doesn't brush their teeth well, you, you could create this guy to have a fucking, a root canal. Or if he doesn't even deal with that, it has to have an extraction. And there's all this shit that happens when you have a tooth come out. The reason why you gotta have another one put in there is because the teeth on either side of it will come closer together and the one underneath it will erupt up to fill the space naturally. Oh, from back adapts. In, yeah, from back in the caveman day. So when it erupts up, there's teeth, there's tooth structure that should be under the gum that now isn't. Holy shit. That doesn't, I think, have the protective enamel. I don't really know. I just handed him the shit. But this is the stuff that I kind of learned as I was standing there. And it's a fucking nightmare, dude. And then you don't chew your food well. It goes into your stomach. And then you don't digest it well. You got fucking problems with your colon. 
It's all connected, dude. Just like that song those people used to sing. Yeah. Well, you know, you have a brain that connects everything. I'm starting to realize that now. That, oh yeah, yeah. And, and it's based in it's based in all overheard conversations. Yeah, but like even the conversation, what, what you're saying about teeth is, is just scary. Like I read an article. Like I think de- uh, dentists have a very high depression rate. I believe that they have suicide a, a, a rate. Higher just, like, suicide. just like comedians because they're not respected. Just like comedians. No, you know what it is. Actually, I read a John Updike book. I think it was called Couples, and, and there's oh, the character. Oh, because he knows. No, but. <laughs> Wait, wait a fuck minute. is this guy? Just he wrote. Wait a uh, you gonna tell me an author knows wait, why? Author writers know things. Let me just explain what I'm saying. I think you were, before. That was you, actually a great point you just made. Before you argue with me, <laughs> I just brought him up like he worked in a sewer. <laughs> well, John Updike. What the yeah, fuck does this guy but, know? No, but what, what I'm saying is that what he said was there is no other profession that has to deal that intimately with decay on a day to day basis with the reality that okay, we decay. No, 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 you know what it is? He romanced it. Okay, so he he's romanced a it. Yeah, exactly. But what rots more than teeth? Every day you just know that we're rotting and that there's no fucking way. Yeah, that's way of- that's unbelievably artistic and poetic. No, it's it's the fact it's it's your alligator armed becoming a neurosurgeon. Oh, okay. So you're you got saying, you got halfway yeah. through medical school and you're like, you know, fuck this. It's like it's like that that comedian who never has the balls to leave where he started. <laughs> yeah, because he's got a good job and blah 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 blah. I think that there's a lot of people like that. My well, dad is not like that. My dad fucking loves it. And if I could be as good a comedian as he is a dentist, he's fucking unbelievable. Well, you're a great comedian, and you're one of the guys that you're talking about. You're a warrior, dude. Oh, you should see my dad fill a tooth. No, yeah. <laughs> no dude. You are, you, are, you are a phoenix that rose from the ashes. I mean, you know, that's one thing that I, you know, I remember, and I think we've had this conversation before in some other version, but like back in the day, that I don't even remember when the hell it was that you got that first deal. You had, you know, your hair was bright red, you were young, you were a fucking, <laughs> you were a comer. You know how much that would have hurt me if I knew you thought that, but you were one of my, you were one of my heroes, man. No, what, I saw you have a set that I still remember oh, fuck. at the fucking New York Comedy Club, which is the most depressing Place Horrible. ever, especially after you just ate your balls at the Boston Comedy Club, and you're like, "Wow, that <laughs> yeah, was my yeah, shot. Yeah. I'm never getting in here." Yeah. And I went in there, and I was watching these horrible comedians, and 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 it was the first time I was out of the Boston area, and everything was new and weird, and I was like, I was like almost homesick, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is fucking horrific." Oh. And you, you went up there, dude, and and it it the place. The place didn't stink anymore. Was, oh. you, you went up and you, you fucking destroyed. And you it was like you were just talking. And I remember sitting there going, I want to be able to... How do you do that? Well, now you do How it. do you do that? That's what I was going to say to you. Well, is that you when go. I met you, whatever my judgment was, maybe it was when you just moved there and you were just trying to you know get your toe in. But it was like something happened between then, like you disappeared. Like, I don't know, you were in New York for a while and did you go back to Boston? No, and come this, back? Is what, this is what happened. Is I was there for eight months and I was barely getting into the clubs and I auditioned for a part in a sitcom and I ended up booking it and then all of a sudden I was on TV and then everybody was just like what the, f- what the f- this fucking guy did like three spots in New oh, York right. and then everybody else was just like oh he's on his way nobody made it quicker I didn't say any of that shit I wanted to be in New York and and learn how to do what the fuck you were doing and all of a sudden I was I was on this this sitcom which was fucking great but um it was another moment where, you know, that I, 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 don't, I that only jammed it. in my parents' basement that I'm with Victor Wooten. My acting was, I took like, you know, that a was couple what it years was. of acting. That was what That's it was. what I got, yeah. And dude, the, I'll tell you right now, the, the, the rumors as to how I got that part. I had no idea about any of it. Oh, all I just knew no, was all that. No, all the comics on my level, you couldn't believe the shit. That's when at my first, it was a big lesson that I learned that no one could ever just say, oh, he went in and he auditioned, he did a good job and got a call back. And then he, he, I went oh, the no, normal he, process. He, he sucked a dick. He did this. He did that. Yeah, it's all you didn't earn. It was just like, dude, I heard him. He, he was, uh, they, they just saw him in a club and he had red hair and, and that, they, that the lead actress had red hair in the show. So it was just like, you know, and he's playing his, his, uh, her brother. So they were just like, that's the guy. And it's just like, first of all, my character is not even related to that character. Uh, I had another person try, like, say, uh, Tell me that they work in the comic strip, and I was like, "Oh, you work in the strip? That's great. You got in." And he was like, "Yeah." I go, "How'd you get in?" And he goes, "Same way you did." This sly look. I go, "How the fuck did? How, how do you think I got in?" He goes, "I heard you weren't passed, and you just started signing up for late night." I was what? like, "No." No, I, I didn't do that. Well, I, well, all this aside, well, you know, I didn't know what happened. I didn't know any of the story. I just, here's what I it was actually a compliment that I was fucking giving you before you it was hijacked a, but, it. But it was a Mark Marin compliment. You, you You're hide- walking around like you were the shit and you had everything going on. You got this deal. I didn't get a deal. All right, I, I all right. the part and it went like okay. a third of a season and we got canceled. All right, all right. So, uh, so we've set the record <laughs> straight. 
But what I was going to say was, then I didn't see you for a while, and then you come back fucking guns blazing, honest as fuck, you, you're delivering the real shit, you're speaking from your heart, and it's fucking beautiful. Got rid of the puppet. Yeah, with the puppet that was you. You were the pu- you were your own puppet. Oh, uh, you know, I yeah, I had a lot to uh, had a lot to learn. But, but I, you kept I, fighting. I mean, that's the thing that's amazing is like because you know you see guys. I mean, the point I was trying to make is that you know I you know I had opportunities, but nothing ever went anywhere. And I'm you know too uh, too fucking you know heady to ever think that anything's gonna you know it change everything. You know, I don't I don't it, my cockiness is so transparent it's fucking ridiculous. And as people <laughs> people get to know me, they realize like oh he's just a marshmallow, right. but uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know what what i have seen is guys who get opportunities like that and it just fucks their head up for good but you went back to the fucking drawing board and you put together an act and you built the fucking thing and now you're a young guy and, and it, you was a th- it was a three-year hangover though because I, I gotta tell you going from like you know fucking eating spaghetti five days a week and then all of a sudden you, you're you're you yeah i had money for like you know right three months yeah it was like i went from like level one to level 100 and then slam back down to level two. And it was like three years. Yeah, and then I, I was still living in L.A. And my, my headset, my br- mind mindset got to the point of like, I have to be on a TV show or else I'm not successful. And it took me three years to figure out, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I want? Oh, I moved to New York because I wanted to be a comedian. And then I moved back in like 99. And then that's, and I just said, fuck it. I'm just going to try to get as funny as I can as a comic. And I'll, you know, maybe I'll, I'll you know. I've, I'm always holding on to that. Someone's going to see me do a special, and they'll be like, "Let's give this kid a movie." Right. You know, that's that's what I'm I'm holding out for. Well, so but. so basically, in in now that we've had the conversation, I was absolutely right in my assessment of what was going on, and and that in that my feelings about how you handled it but, and where you began and where you've come. I didn't. From I, did, I didn't right. think I was all set. And oh, the, that's and, the only and, thing. And that- there was no. And there nor has there ever been cockiness. I, like so many people, you know, something what it really is is a lot of times you're a quiet person, like I was back then, as opposed to now, where I never shut the fuck up. People are so th- they, they assume that that I don't know what. Like when you're quiet, if you, they they just think that you're you're thinking you're, that, that, yeah, that, I that get you're that. thinking that yeah, they're yeah, an yeah, asshole. Yeah. And what I was really doing was questioning everything I did in the last five minutes on the way to the club. <laughs> well, you hit it well. Oh yeah. yeah, thank God you were a good looking kid and you had a good jacket. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> But and now, now, as opposed to the depressing decay that you look at now, no, to, no. to bring it back to the to the fucking John Updike. I just stick love to it. talking about what you know about. I, what I, I, that was that was where it came from. I, you actually dis, dislodged something that, like, I had had that that idea stuck in my head about dentists. That, right. That's not something I just pulled out of my ass. I, I'm not that much of an intellectual, but I remember there was this whole paragraph in that book about decay and about this guy looking at it right. every day and about the existential implications of having to deal with it on that level every day. What it really is is you watch Top Gun. And you're like, I'm going to join the Air Force, and I'm going to fly an F-16. And then you end up being the guy who puts the gas in it or has those orange <laughs> those orange sticks. That's what a lot of people view being a dentist as. It's not respected as being in the medical field. And one of the, one of the great things when I worked in the dental office was I saw – how cool that job was! The ability to get people out of pain, and also they're was like they're incredible. Like, they're like jewelers. I mean, the type of the, the 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 type of work they do in the space they do it in, it's fucking the, the great ones. Yeah, the great ones, not the hacks, not the thieves. No, the hacks aren't even using real gold. <laughs> not the cruise ship dentists. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not talking about those. Let's guys. just pull it. Not those. Oh, how, guys. How, how funny is that commercial? I was talking about that uh, the other day. I think on stage or something like that. The uh, have you seen that commercial that? The fifty dollar gold coin that they're selling for nineteen ninety five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, yeah. looking at it like it's an investment, it's like no one has the brains to realize that if you had if something worth fifty and you sold it for nineteen, you'd be out of business. That's right. Within now, two weeks. Well, that God bless America because people are filled with that lack of brains. Oh, and, that, and it sounds it speaks exactly to limit the thing limit that you're... limit five per customer just to create that. Oh fuck. Oh, I gotta get more. But this this leads right into your fucking uh, the ongoing conversation about the bankers. Oh, it's 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 just the rep, just reprehend like they I I I don't believe that there are uh, is you know five people running the world, but there are five fucking banks that are just getting away with murder. That's Dude, absolutely right. They, they don't, that's, even, that's they don't even show right. up. Like they had a meeting with the president. They blew it off because it was foggy. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's too foggy. Yeah, let's, we'll, let's, let's, we'll, can we do it over the phone? We'll meet our puppet later. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he no. works for us anyways. So, no. you know, just tell him to wait and we'll, we'll try to make another time for him. 
Oh, and every I, I get you know I, I make fun of them a lot on my podcast, and so I always get people like someone. Someone today was just talking about yet another fee that they're coming up, and the guy literally writes, "I understand the banks are hurting." It's like, how are they hurting? Yeah, they yeah. they were hurting, and then we gave them a trillion dollars, and now they're just hiding the money and they're holding on to it to see what oh, they can. Uh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I I I mean I have that problem too, but I don't understand it as much as. Uh, maybe uh, you do, or some people do. No, 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 dude. I'm, I'm, I'm the There's loud guy in the bar. Yeah, but you're like <laughs> me though. But you're, like, but you're like me though. Like in my mind, I don't want to carry any fucking debt. Like oh, the only debt I carry now that I got out of the divorce and everything else is the mortgage. That's it. Right. And and in the rest, I I just try to keep paid up because I do want, I don't want to fucking spend the interest yeah. on it. But if you don't do that, then all of a sudden you can't play anymore. Yeah. I was listening to the thing on the on the other day. If you don't carry debt, then your credit goes a little sour. They oh, need you. To- you're considered an inactive member of society, even though you're in society. You don't yell at old people. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you show and, up and, to your buddy's podcast. Yeah, you know, you're doing a bunch of wonderful you, things. You, you have respect for dentistry. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but, you might say some fucked up things about John Updike, but generally speaking, <laughs> you're participating in society. But the, the thing was, I, I heard some on NPR too that people who who followed the old rules of like you know saving money, they're getting fucked. People who saved oh, yeah. money, no, just no, regular yeah. savings without playing yep. the fucking game, they don't make no money on their money. Well, Nothing. Yeah, no. Well, that's what happened. Yeah. The, the whole thing, the, 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 the genius of the game. Now, part of it is you got to keep the economy going. I get that. But the genius of the whole thing is through uh, penalties and fees. You will put your money exactly where they want you to. And they decide the penalties and but, fees but, based on nothing. On nothing, yeah. just because they need money. Like yeah. if they're like, we're we're running low on money. Let's let's uh, create a fee. Somebody told me a long time when I was doing that that short lived sitcom. I, I kept all my money in the bank, and someone's like, "Dude, that's the dumbest thing you can do. Take it over to fucking you know, uh, yeah, throw who, it on who, the table, put it on yeah, number put, seven. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I had mine in Bank of America, and I have this fucked up way of thinking where I think they they believe in me and my loyalty. Like with yeah, it, it, it's no, still no, in no, my they, brain. They my don't. wiring's still they fucked don't. up about American Express. Like I believe that shit. Member since you get you know, I'm like I'm special. I I barely ever use the card, and I won't cancel it because it says eighty nine on. Member since eighty yeah. <laughs> nine. I don't want to start over again. Yeah, they like you, Billy. Well, they're actually they're like they're oh, dude, just the names of the the Mastercard. Yeah, you're a fucking slave. I'll tell you, they, the they have thing. the balls to even say it. And we're so fucking stupid, walking around like oh, that's, I'm the master. Yeah, yeah. Put this round on me, and then you, and then you get yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me use my Mastercard. But I'll tell you honestly, though, there are some perks that I I I've grown to appreciate. Does membership a, have its privilege? I'll tell you what does. <laughs> I recently recommitted to American Airlines. Like, I'm not going to fly anybody else if I, if I can help it. I'm not going to look for fucking bargains to say $50 because then I get Oof. no status and I can't upgrade. And all I want to do is walk on the fucking plane first so I can put my fucking bag on. Oh, yeah. Because I don't want to be stuck where I got to check the fucking bag and wait an hour on the other end. Exactly. So I, so I recommitted to American Airlines and I got an American. An elitist. Yeah. I got American <laughs> Express. And, and I don't even hardly get upgraded because there's other guys that, like up in the air guys that live, you know, they live their life there, but occasionally. Oh, yeah. So then I got the American Express. Those and I got guys a, who oversee the sweatshop labor. Everything. They, they yeah, racking yeah. up all the, the miles. The slave drivers. Flying That's over right. to Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. To make sure that uh, we're keeping Americans yeah. out of work. So Why is that eight-year-old sleeping? Yeah, yeah. All right, I got to go fly yeah, back got, to yeah, Cali. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's always getting bumped up. I'm getting the upgrade, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> he's doing the big work. <laughs> Yeah, so no, so then I got the American Express. I, I I got a platinum card a few years ago, only because you get free uh, Ambassador Club entrance, which is the American you know fl- uh, oh, frequent yeah. flyer lounge with the with the Amex. So I don't even need to you know pay the. You know what's sad? And it's it's kind of nice though. But if it was, nice. if it was the seventies, you would have got a hand job. Oh yeah, you would have got totally a lot would. of things. Oh yeah, you would have. I think you still can, but you can't put it on the card unless it's an, a legit operation. I think that was that was the uh... never my bag. Do you know, like, I, I always bring this up all the time. Do you know back in the day, you want, like, first class fucking blows now compared to how it used to. Do you know back in the day on the uh, on Pan Am, you know the MetLife building used to be the Pan Am building? Yeah. They used to own that thing. So when you yeah. landed in JFK, yeah. that wasn't the end of your first class. You got off. They put your bags on a helicopter, and you flew to the top of that building. No. You could have drinks. Yeah? Yeah. And then you, every chick probably looked like fucking Farrah Fawcett. And then, then you took your, the elevator down, and then you would uh, you get in a car, a cab, and you would go to the hotel. And what ended up happening was a helicopter actually crashed. Oh. 
You can look. I mean, I, this you can actually look up. I remember unless when that somebody happened. photoshopped right, the blades it, f- uh, flew off, the flew top. down, and then then hit like the son of some big porno star or something. Some fucking weird. That, so whoever, whoever died on the ground was either that or like they they were like you know. So this signals the end of the seventies for you. This was this was the end of the great age of first class. The the great age of <laughs> yeah of, of of airline travel. Yeah, yeah, that like, was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck. So what are you, are you stashing money? I mean, do you are you like a hide it in your mattress kind of guy? You don't have to divulge in. No, I I'm one of those guys. You where buying gold? I just I just uh, I got r- dude. Th- there's nothing they can devalue gold if they want to. I know it's there's nothing. It's a fixed game. The get the it's, casino. It's a fixed and my, game. And my thing about it is, I have no problem with the rigged fucking game. My problem is with those guys is that it's never enough. That's the disease that that scares me about that corporate mentality where every quarter you have to show a profit, and it, it's we're we're. You know, we're going to be like the bottom line. pretty soon. We're yeah, gonna be it's going already happening. Yeah, it's already happening. I think in 20 years, like if I'm still doing this shit, like I'm going to literally be coming up from the floor with like a court gesture. On, <laughs> yeah, we are sort of doing like court gig, uh, corporate I, gigs. Do you do corporate gigs? No. I don't either. I Because no one's asking me. That's for fucking sure. They barely ask me. To, they don't even ask me to do colleges. There's right. no way I could do it. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I can't. I, I just have a, a biological problem with kissing ass. Yeah, on that level. Yeah, no, I don't have a problem if if you want me coming, you want me to work clean. I would do. I mean, I I don't get offers to do them. Is is really the more honest answer. But I I would do them. But I do find them. Uh, when I I did, I mean, there's always a weirdness, and then I find those people like they are just in an entirely the same way. Like Yankee and Red Sox fans don't understand what those two teams have done to the rest of the baseball teams. Like, ah, they're fine. It's like they've never been to the a fucking Padres game in August. They haven't. Yeah. And it's like these guys, they're not assholes. They just don't know. They don't they don't understand yeah. Yeah. what it is that the, the ramifications of it. Um Well fucking corporate but, structure. Uh, but of course I don't have any I I don't have any solutions. Not right. really any facts to even judge these people. I really realized how full of shit I was. Yeah, that's like, a like, that's like, a that's a good moment to have. Yeah, that's the same moment where you realize, like, maybe I should just, you know, when I don't know something, not pretend like I do and admit that I'm wrong sometimes. Yeah, I think I've, that, I've gotten to the point now is I still make my point with passion, and then I I try to like pull the ripcord and just say, ah, I'm full of shit at the end of it. Oh, good. Yeah, the that's disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, the disclaimer. The, the, the post after, argument after disclaimer. I've berated you and you can draw my <laughs> index finger from memory well, at the that weird, point. The thing that people don't really understand about corporate structure is there's a guy at the top that represents all the people with money. Yeah, the CEO. Everyone under the CEO, their entire lives are dedicated to displacing blame on the people beneath them. So right. basically, even in show business, the corporate structure is, it's amazing anything happens at all. They're, they're just protecting people's money or they're trying to take credit for any success possible and, right. and make sure no blame sticks I thought there wasn't one guy. I thought there's a board and, and that way it's faceless. And they just always have their Ollie, right, but the their board, Ollie North that they wheel out. Well, they, the they board, I think, hires the dude to, to take the hits and make the decision. Yeah, podium guy. Right, you're the CEO. Right. Yeah. So, but but it just seems to me in corporate structures, most people, you know, you know there, there's, there, they, they all know they're doing yeah, something wrong, but they just try to displace the blame onto the next guy. And if if somebody is a good blame displacer, they move up. The, those guys are rewarded. Most of the guys at the top are not there because they're geniuses. It's just because no shit is stuck to them. Yeah. There's a, there's, have you ever seen that documentary, The Corporation? Oh yeah. And how it compares to a psychotic uh, person? Yeah, sociopath. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and I think that uh, like the, that like that's what the war should be about, like the war on terror, the war on drugs. The war on, it should just be a war on like sociopaths because I feel like I've traveled enough and I've met enough people. People are pretty chill. Yeah, people are okay. People are pretty yeah, chill. Yeah. And then there's always that one fucking maniac. It even starts like in college when you have like a group project. Yeah. There's just always that one fucking maniac yeah. that is just wants to pour fucking salt in the fields and rape the women and you, you, they're like yeah. salivating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? They have no they they have no conscience. None. Yeah, no empathy. That guy moves up in the corp because they'll, they'll pour shit in the drinking water. Fuck yeah, corner yeah. office. Who cares? I'm on it. I don't understand how they fucking do it. I think that they compartmentalize things. That when a corporation or people that work at a corporation know fucking good and well that they're destroying everything, perhaps the perhaps the future of the fucking world is that somehow in their dumb brains they don't they right. don't look at the long term. They're just like it's good for the corporation, and they yeah. got their fingers in the fucking. I mean, everything. I don't they think they own like, politicians. The, they the own geniuses us. are not destroying everything. They're just, they're just, they're, they're pushing, pushing it just one inch closer. I mean, we all are, dude. We're a fucking mess. I mean, like you're defending your life. 
Because if if that's the scam that you're in, if some like say like you got this great house here, if somebody was like seriously threatening your lifestyle, I'm not saying you'd kill them, but you'd you'd want the pro if you could have the fucking problem solved. No, but I know that if I, I could I kill understand. that old guy who right. lives under. I, I, well, <laughs> but that's true. But that goes back to what we were talking about before. How do those people justify the fact that their job is basically to protect their bottom line, deny people coverage because they don't pull the trigger? Right. So they displace blame. That's why. I got, a, I got a buddy blame. of mine. Uh, not a buddy. Just uh, 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 Jesus. I can't. No, I can't tell the fucking story. I have this this human being who needs oxygen to to breathe. Is that that a guy you with? know? A guy I know. Whatever, he knocks this girl up, and then she got to get a fucking... Now I'm whispering, like, this is yeah. going to make right, it We won't tell okay. anybody. Right, Let's right, keep right, it between us. Yeah. Yeah. So he knocks yeah. this girl up, okay? Yeah. Yeah. He knocks this girl up. <laughs> yeah. Neither, they were just having a good time, yeah. right? Yeah. She probably still had her shoes on. There was yeah. no love there, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's no love. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun in the moment. Yeah, yeah so she gets pregnant, and they got to fucking do something about this. So they do it, all right? Yeah. 15, you know, 15 fucking years later, you know, same guy, he's married, he's got, he has a kid. And he just goes, you know what? You know, now that I have a kid, like I'm totally against abortion. Like, and it made sense to me. Now yeah. that you see this wonderful thing, yeah, yeah, and it made sense to me. But then he takes it a step further, and uh, I guess some abortion doctor had gotten killed in, like, you know, Nebraska or something. And then he takes it a step further. He goes, you know, you know, the thing that they did to that guy out there in Nebraska. Yeah, it's like I support that. Ugh. I support that. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, dude. It's like you, you fucking hired that guy. Yeah. And he goes, no, 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 dude. He goes, I, I made a mistake. He yeah. kept going, I don't see it that way. And it was driving me nuts. He goes, no, I, I don't see it that way. He's like, you know, I made a mistake. All right. Uh-huh. That guy, he did it for a living. And he actually justified it to the point was he didn't actually perform the abortion. He just gave the money for it. And he, he distanced himself. It's like, dude, don't you understand? If you hired somebody to kill me and they did your accessory to murder. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. And he just kept going, you know, I, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way. And it was literally like, I was like, you know, this is the kind of fucking guy that you can get, you could get, and you could, you could talk him into a guard tower in a fucking concentration camp. Oh, you could and talk like, like, I, in, like, in like five I, seconds. All you do is you tell him, you know, what a great guy he is and how he should be having more and how he's getting fucked and these are the people fucking him. He would be up there like Sergeant Schultz but that's there's in like, five seconds. It's, it's shame-based, self-hating-based revenge almost. He's a fucking moron. Right. But I believe I believe in this country, like it could happen, like in Rwanda. In Rwanda, there were, you know the Tutsis and the Hutus. It was like it was like one day they, the guy came on the radio and said, "Go kill the other tribe," yeah. and they all fucking did. I don't think we're that far from that here. I, no, I think, no, yeah, yeah, you're not. Are you kidding me? No, fuck no. That if they were Absolutely. to one day come out and say, you know, go kill all the black people, go kill all the the Mexicans, go kill the other, which white. is why you can't deregulate the media, and they did. It's fucking over. Yeah. It's over. You got fucking, you know, Rupert Murdoch could make that happen. Someone could make it happen. Before the end of this podcast. Except they, they lose a lot of consumers. It's capitalism again. The only thing they're worried about is like- That's what the, I always think. Some of those people have like, money. Yeah. You know, no, no. I'll tell you. The, some of them the, always the end money. Game, the end game is fucking robots. Yeah. Dude, once robot. they make robots, they're smarter than us and they don't bitch. Don't they Dude, exist? It's over. There's no, one they're, sitting they're on, on the way. fucking table between us right way. now. I don't know what this computer does. Hey, you want to hear something fucked up? I had a cab ride. I'm going to whisper again. because Okay, let's keep it down. Keep it down. Um I was having this cab, uh, cab ride, you know, fucking land in some horrific place going to do this gig. And this guy was saying how his, his, his son was actually in, like, the CIA. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, I must be proud and blah, blah, blah. He starts talking and whatever. So he was saying, and we, I, I forget how the fucking story went, but it was basically he was saying that the computer that he had, he could not only get into your computer, anybody, he can turn it on. When it's off, and he goes, because like his neighbor was pissing, his dad's neighbor was pissing him off. He goes, you want me to fuck with him? He's going to use his CIA laptop just to be a, a fucking cunt to the guy next oh, door. Oh, jeez. And I was just like, wow. And then I was just, it was kind of unsettling. I'm like, so there's really no privacy. No privacy. And he goes, that. yeah. And he and he was upset by it, too. Like, I, I you know, that, that was a moment he was trying to impress his dad. Yeah. Like, be proud of me, dad. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, great, son. Yeah. <laughs> great, son. You're, you joined the uh, Cobra Kai. Way to go. That, and that feeds into the whole thing. Like, you know, I, I don't know how you manage it. Like, I used to be, uh, uh, you know, think about that stuff all the time. And I still think about it sometimes. Like, I don't, I know this is unprotected and there's very little privacy anywhere. And now with the, the, the my first reaction to the scans at the airport where they can see you're naked, 
you know, I, I, it's like being fucking raped by a machine. No, no, it's, but it's bad. It's you, bad. And, you know, and, and they, and it's all fucking fear based. And this is going to happen if we don't do this. And you know, fighting for security and all this. But do bullshit. you ever have that moment where you're like, I hope my cock looks all right, <laughs> dude? Okay, let, let's. You know what? Something. My fucking cock right now. I'm yeah. having a problem with it. No, come on. I fucking. We rescued a pit bull. All oh, right. This can't be a good. How did those things go together? Yeah. yeah. So the other day, I'm laying in bed. I'm in my boxers. You know boxers oh boy the fucking dog goes to get up on the bed he basically like fucking threw a hook to my dick oh okay my God. yeah it just he fucking scratched I'm my so dick glad he didn't I, fucking... I, I, I had to put neosporin on so that's the joke between me and my girl because she's the one who picked it up I'm like great your dog mauled my cock oh, i'm so glad he didn't <laughs> maul it <laughs> no no it's a sweetheart the, i fucking love the dog to but death. i mean it was just a it's scratch just... i mean you set it up like oh my god did he tug on it I like know, a guy oh i know I, right, well, I think that's a good way to close. There you go. Get, get my cock mauled. Yeah. How, how, how are we going to top that? You feel uh, satisfied with what we've done here? Yeah. I think we went, we went a little rogue. We went a little crazy. It's the only way to go. Yeah. All right, Bill Burr. <laughs> where, where can they get your thing? Uh, my podcast? Yeah. Uh, go to BillBurr.com and just click on uh, podcast. It's up on the iTunes if you want to download it, kids. And uh, that's it. All right, man. Thanks, buddy. All right, thanks. <laughs> Okay, that was Bill Burr. I'm glad we got that settled and, and cleared up. What a funny guy. What a, what, a, what a great guest. To the point where we're not even, we don't have to do a, a third thing. We're not doing a third thing today. There's no third thing. But I got a million plugs. For myself, of course, and for things related <laughs> to, to the show. As you know, hold on. Let me do it now. I didn't do it before. Pow! Oh, my God. I just shit my pants. Just Coffee is a fair trade coffee cooperative. Visit justcoffee.coop and you can get a link for that at WTFPod.com. WTFPod.com is going to be expanding in the very near future. I will be introducing the Nerdcock t-shirt shortly. It's going to be a limited press, limited printing, but we're going to make them available on WTFPod.com along with the WTF t-shirts that are cheaper than the ones we've uh, previously been offering to a, a second party. Uh, so, you know, look forward to that. There's also going to be more stuff. I'll keep you informed on that. But you can go there now and get on the email list so I can tell you when I'm coming to your town. Follow us on Twitter. Make it sub uh, subscription or donation, which is very helpful. You still get the T-shirt with the subscription. We're going to broaden those options out a bit, too. But also, uh, PunchlineMagazine.com has been very supportive of our show, and we are supportive of them. They are the uh, premier comedy business and uh, entertainment website for uh, breaking news interviews, uh, record reviews, CD reviews, DVD reviews, and they do their own video series there, punchlinemagazine.com. Please go to that. One more time before I get too close at this weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 14, 15, and 16, Seattle at Laughs Comedy Club in Kirkland. I will be there. Uh, go get tickets. Do it. And I want to plug again the WTF Comedy Central pilot taping. That's a little more complicated. Because they don't have a website, it is January 28th here in Los Angeles at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Comedy Central stage at the Hudson Theater. Uh, you can call 323-960-5519 for reservations. I believe that's almost everything that I have to do for you today. Uh, I'm sorry if this got a little long uh, in terms of plugging, but uh, I do want you to come see me. And I really appreciate you listening. I appreciate uh, all your emails. I do read all of them, by the way. I mean, I guess if there were thousands, I wouldn't. But I do read the ones you send, and we will do another email show soon. I'd like to thank John Montagna again of Brooklyn, a bass player who created the new WTF theme music. If you want to hear more of his work, you can go to johnmontagna.com. J-O-H-N-M-O-N-T-A-G-N-A. Thanks a lot, brother. Sounds great. Really gets me going.